Hey everybody, Greg Laurie here talking about the Jesus Revolution film and the story behind the story. You know, there's the real story and the real story. R-E-E-L, i.e. the film, and R-E-A-L, i.e. real life. To really get the rest of the story, I would encourage you to get a copy of my book, Jesus Revolution. The film was actually based on this book that I wrote with Ellen Vaughn. Ellen is an amazing writer. We worked on another book. It was my autobiography called Lost Boy, but Ellen does a lot of deep diving in her research on the backdrop of what was happening in the culture uh, during the days of the Jesus movement. And so you're going to get the whole story in the book because the movie is, is a dramatic presentation. And when a movie is made, events are compressed. Sometimes characters are left out. As an example, Kathy and I met after our conversion, but in the film, we know each other before the conversion. But he was trying to tell a story of a generation and using us as the faces of it. And so there's little things that are a little different than how they happen in real life. But now I want to talk about one of people's favorite scenes. In fact, someone came up to me the other day and said, what did it feel like when Chuck gave you the keys to your new church? And in the film, you see Kelsey Grammer playing the role of Chuck Smith, going to Joel Courtney, playing the role of myself, and he gives him the keys to his church. Well, it didn't quite happen that way. Though Chuck did not give me the keys to a new church, he was the key to starting this church. So here's what actually happened. Lonnie Frisbee, played by Jonathan Rumi in the film, was asked to come up to Riverside, California from Orange County. It's about a 45-minute drive to do something similar to what was happening down there at Calvary Chapel. So there was a church in Riverside called All Saints Episcopal Church. So they said, Lonnie, would you come up and hold meetings? And he did, and they exploded. In fact, I went with Lonnie a couple of times up to those Riverside meetings. Around 300 people were in attendance. It was very similar to what was happening in Costa Mesa. But then Lonnie left for Florida. When he left, the study up in Riverside was passed around to various Calvary Chapel pastors. And they were all a little bit older than me, seven, eight, nine years. And I was just sort of hanging around the church. And we call them interns now. Back then, I was just someone that would just be there. I had my drawing board set up because I was doing my artwork, and, and I would sort of do what nobody else wanted to do. In other words, when the pastors would go out for lunch, I'd answer the phone. So I'm around 19 years old, just knowing I wanted to serve the Lord in ministry. So one day, the pastors were having a conversation, and uh, someone said, well, who's going to Riverside this week? And one of them said, well, I went last week. Another said, well, I, I'm going two weeks from now. Oh, well, who wants to go? And no one was saying they wanted to go. And I said, I'll go. And so go ahead, Greg. I got up in Riverside and I showed up at the church and I started teaching this little Bible study, which had shrunk down to around 30 people at this point. So it was no longer 300. And I just started teaching the Bible and they asked me to come back the next week and the next week and it began to grow. And it began to grow to 300. Then we were over 300 and we were overflowing this church and I knew we needed to get our own church building. So I went to Pastor Chuck and I said, Chuck, I need a building in Riverside. He said, well, you should look around for one. So we started looking and we found this building on Arlington Avenue. It was an old deserted Baptist church. They had a church split. This scene is in the film. And so the church was left empty and it was available for lease. Well, we didn't have any money back then. And I went to Pastor Chuck and said, would you come and look at it? So he drove up and we're walking around this building. He's talking with the realtor sitting there in the front pew. And I saw Chuck pull out a checkbook, write something down, hand it to the realtor and Chuck came to me and says, okay, you got yourself a church. So what he did was he wrote a check for our first payment. Then Calvary, very generously, Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa, gave us a loan, which we paid back with interest. So that's the story of how we got our church. Now, after that, there was a big, giant, decomposed granite pit next to our building, about 12 acres. And we bought that and we built what is our sanctuary today. So... It's so amazing that Pastor Chuck had this vision and had this willingness to take a risk on someone like me. It amazes me. I'm forever thankful to God. 
So that's how our church got started. Now, our church started out as Calvary Chapel of Riverside. A few years later, we changed our name to Harvest because all the events we were doing were called Harvest This and Harvest That. So it just became easier to call everything Harvest. But uh, we're getting ready to celebrate 50 years of ministry. And God has blessed us. And if you're ever in Southern California, you're more than welcome to join us for one of our morning services. To find out more, just go to harvest.org. So that is the story of how our church actually got started.